Hey everybody, Michael here. Today we're going to be looking at how to recreate this scene in Blender. Uh, I call this the Warden's Box. You can check this out in my Instagram in the description down below. I'm going to be going over all the techniques that I used in order to make this scene look as good and as realistic as possible. So we're going to be looking at lighting, volumetrics, we're going to be looking at something called project from view, which is an un un unwrapping method that I used to create the eye. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So as you can see, we're here in the blend file. And as you can see, it's a really not that complicated of a scene, but it produces a beautiful realistic image as we see uh, on the rendered view here on the right. So right now we're in solid view and let's first things first, let's just uh, isolate this eye by pressing slash. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to teach you basically how to create this eye, right? So if we go into material preview mode here, you can see that this looks pretty realistic and super scary, uh, which is exactly the effect that we want to achieve. So first things first, we need to be able to grab a picture of an eye from the internet. So this was a basic 2D image. As you can see here, I took this from the internet, even though the angle is not really correct. It had all the features that I wanted, the bloodshot red eyes mainly. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of a trick in order to make this work. So what you're going to do is that you're going to create a new material. You're going to call it eye or whatever you want. And I want you to take that JPG file that you had earlier, and I want you to drag it into the node system. And it should appear as a image texture here. So if you don't know what an image texture are, is, it, image textures are basically textures of 2D images that is going to be represented or then, you know, presented onto the 3D plane and wrapped around the mesh of your choice, which in this case is a sphere, right? So we just may, uh, put that into our base color and you can put that uh, into your roughness as well. I just have a color ramp here in order to crank the numbers and crank the roughness a little bit more to what I want. So you can do that for a little bit more fine tuning. But now that you have this eye, so it's just going to, let's just reset it. So this is, this may be what it looks like originally, and this is absolutely not what we want from the scene. So what we're going to do is that we're going to tap into edit mode. We're going to press A in order to select all faces. We're going to press U for UV unwrap, and we're going to click something called project from view. Now, basically what this does is that creates, if we go into edit mode here, you can see within our UV editor tab here that we have all of the faces of sphere as if it's looking directly at us. We can see these two circles that kind of we can represent as the eyeball. So what we want to do now is that in this UV um, editor screen, which you can just click by opening up a new window, clicking here, and then you can just find the UV editor here. So now we want to move this around and scale it to kind of fit what we want from the scene using the mesh as kind of a guiding line. So as you can see here, there's a bit too much white on the right side. So we're just going to U, project from view again. Uh, and now we should get something that's a little more like this. And as you can see, although this isn't a perfect solution, it definitely obtains that realism that you're going for. And of course, again, as well, since this scene is a little bit further away, the, it's okay for there not to be any bump nodes or for the roughness to be slightly messed up. So for now, we can just leave it as it is. And as we look in the scene here, we can see that that produces a super, super realistic replica of the eye that we're trying to create and establish in this scene. So if we look in the render view here and we zoom in, you can see that that looks super realistic. Of course, there's other techniques that you can do in order to make the eye look even more realistic, such as adding extra mesh or sculpting the eye to make it look less uniform but um i decided that for my scene today that this was going to be enough um for the audience to look at and be like yeah that's like a pretty pretty realistic looking eye so that's kind of like the first technique i used which is again to remind everyone it's called project from view in order to create an image like this okay so next we can take a look at the lighting system and see exactly how the lighting impacts the scene that we're in so let's just go to solid view again and let's just kind of take away a bunch of different things. So, uh, give me a second here. Let's just click this, which is our, I'll just call this fog and our lighting. So these two things are the ones driving our, uh, lighting system completely in the scene. So as you can see, I have one spotlight here. And if I move this away, all the scene, all the lighting in the scene goes away. So everything that you see in the scene is responsible, is the responsibility of this spotlight so let me just show you how exactly we can create something like this so what we can do let's just 
um, press the I icon there in order to have it go away. And let's press Shift A and let's add in a spotlight. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the screencast key so you guys can see exactly what I'm pressing. So let's just rotate the spotlight into our scene and as you can see the guiding line to show where the beam is going to go now in our spotlight settings we want to turn this power up way way up let's go something like one megawatts which is usually my default and now you can kind of see how this one light is able to drive the entire lighting for the scene so let's also reduce the spot size and the spot size is basically how wide the light should go kind of like a torch and let's increase the blending in order to make it look more natural. Now, as you can see here, you can see how harsh the difference is between the darks and the light positions. So what we can do is we can increase something called the radius. So this radius, essentially what it does is that it creates a softer, uh, it creates a softer shadows and it also creates a softer light beam for you to be able to see the scene. So as you can see, as we increase it here, you can see what's happening is that the blending between the dark and the lights of the scene is now a little bit more seamless. So we have now achieved something a little similar to what we had originally. And now all you have to do is kind of play around with the uh, spot size as well as the positions, because for example, we could do it from above, we could do it from the other side, we could do the lighting from the front, from the back, whatever it is that you want to do. So this is kind of the tip that I have to create uh, lighting like this. Now, another component that is really driving like all of the lighting in the scene is this cube here which is the fog or uh what i call the fog this is basically a volume scatter uh node so let me show you exactly how this works so let's just again like i said let's just take this away and you can kind of definitely see the difference here the light is super harsh now and it doesn't have that kind of beam of light that I wanted to show in the final piece. So what can we do? Let's press shift A, let's press cube, let's expand the cube and let's go into the object properties here. We could see we could show the viewport display and display as bounce. And this way you don't accidentally be clicking on the fog when you're trying to work in your scene. So let's create a new material in our material or in our shader editor here uh, yeah okay let's create a new material and let's call it uh fog and let's delete the principled bsdf press shift a uh, and we can search the volume scatter node we're gonna plug the volume directly into the volume and as you can see, nothing is going to happen now, but if we decrease the density to something much lower, like 0.01, we can see that we're starting to achieve that beam of light look that we were hoping to achieve earlier. We can also increase something called the anisotropy. And in simple terms, an anisotropy is basically uh, how close you want the fog to be to the light. And that's going to be a little bit clearer now that I show it to you. So if we increase the anisotropy, we can see that the light uh, starts to recede back to its original source. So obviously that's too high, but let's go again from zero. And if we're increasing it up to something like 0.7, you can see that the bulk of the light is receding back from uh, the end towards somewhere in the middle of the beam. So the reason that I like to have a higher anisotropy is because number one, it looks more realistic this way. Light works this way in real life as well. And also that it, it usually creates a little bit more of a mysterious or mystique um, to the piece. So I'm going to decrease the density again and feel free to decrease and increase the density as you please and, you know, have it as high or low as you want. But obviously the higher your density goes, the more cloudy or fog up, fogged up your scene is going to be. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to have my original fog. So my settings are 0 0.01 and an anisotropy of 0.8. Uh, as for my original lighting, uh, in this scene, um, it's one megawatts, like I said earlier, a spot size of 13.8 and a radius of 5.32 meters. So all of these techniques combined, we can use in order to create a more realistic scene and a scene that generally looks a lot better than 
um, you know, a scene that doesn't use these techniques. So the last thing that I want to tell you is kind of a little bit of an additional one, but it's kind of how I made this window to make it look like a jail cell or a dungeon or whatever it is that you want, is that actually that, you know, to let you in on a little secret, this isn't actually a real mesh. So I'm using something called the Bool Tool, which is a free add-on that you can download or that you can enable directly through Blender. So what, uh, in order to create this window is really simple. So let's just delete this or actually let's just uh, hide. Uh, yeah, no, we're going to have to delete it for now. Let's for shift a, let's get a cube. Let's make that cube a little bigger and let's intersect it with the wall on the right that we have here. So now what we're going to do is that with bool tools enable, we're going to press shift and click on the wall. And we want to make sure that the wall is selected uh, with this kind of like lighter orange outline. And we want to press control numpad minus. And that's going to cut a hole into the mesh that you have selected originally. And this is super useful for a number of different reasons. One, this is a non-destructive workflow, meaning that at any point in time, I could just move this away or I could delete the queue and the wall will stay completely intact. And number two is that this is a super simple and easy and really cheap way for your computer to create a, you know, like a hole in a wall or to add uh, like more geometry to a mesh in order to make it more complex and more interesting. So I hope that these tips have been super helpful so far. If you want to know where I got these other assets, you can always put them down in the comment section down below. I am actually creating an asset pack filled with all of my um all of the meshes and all of the assets that i've used in so many of my different projects on my instagram so if that's something that you're looking forward to you can always comment down below and leave a thumbs up on the video so that i know that you're looking forward to having an asset pack that you can download and use free commercially free for any project that you want so yeah so that's going to be coming up in a couple of months hopefully depending on the feedback that i get from my textures i get all of them from ambient cg or from the blender kit add-on i've had other videos about that that you can click on the eye on the top right of the screen to see uh exactly where to get them and how to enable them in blender but other than that thank you everyone so much again for joining me this week in blender and i hope that you learned something stay tuned for next week we're gonna have another fresh video talking about a completely new different topic and i hope that i have somehow made your blender journey a little bit easier thank you again and don't forget to click the subscribe button so i can keep more amazing content coming your way thank you and see you around